Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Hope. We're glad that all of you are here as we celebrate the Lord together. I will begin with the announcement that everyone has been waiting for for over a year. And that is uh, the CDC has now said that people who are fully vaccinated no longer have to wear masks and no longer have to social distance. And that's indoors or outdoors. However, if you are not fully vaccinated, it is recommended that you still wear a mask. And of course, those who uh, feel uncomfortable not wearing a mask are always welcome uh, to wear your mask for safety reasons. That means that the announcement of the letter from the bishop has now been superseded and uh, we received a new announcement from the conference after the bulletin was made and that is that the conference agrees with the CDC and uh, churches are allowed to go by the CDC guidelines. So that's why we're unmasking for many of us today. Other announcements, as you can see uh, on the weekly schedule, uh, first of all, our uh, regular monthly finance meetings and administrative board meeting uh, scheduled for tomorrow night at 6.30 and 7 respectively will be held in person for the first time in a long time and we they will both be meeting in the fellowship hall. Also the stewardship meeting uh, on Wednesday evening at 5.30 will meet in person in the Pairs and Spares Sunday School room. All right. My wife already has an announcement. I don't know how to use one of these things. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I might not need this. Uh, we are going to offer a morning Bible study this sun summer. It's not a Bible study, it's a book study. Um, sort of a Bible study. Um, it is called The Women of the Bible Speak. Uh, it's written by Shannon Breen, and it's a look at the lives of 16 women of the Bible, including some like Rachel and Leah, Esther, Mary Magdalene, um, Deborah, uh, and it takes a look at the lives of these women and uh, offers us the opportunity to look at the characteristics and the character uh, traits in their lives to see how those might be uh, of use to us in our own spiritual journey. It will meet on Tuesday mornings at 1030. I do not have the start date yet but because part of that will depend on uh, the, when we order the books and when they arrive. There is a sign-up sheet at the back of the church. So when you leave this morning, if you're interested in uh, attending this study, um, feel free to write your name on the list, and then we'll get in contact with you uh, with start dates and those kinds of things. I, I don't know the exact cost of the book, but I would say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $18. Uh, to buy the book. Of course, if you decide to use a, I just went blind, an electronic version, uh, it would be less than that. Um, the other thing I want to say to you is although the title of the book is The Women of the Bible Speak, uh, this study is open to everyone, including men, who might be interested in attending if that time marks well for you. Also, I wanted to say that we are also going to do a study in the evening this summer uh, on the book of Galatians, but it will start later in June, uh, and it will be offered in the evenings for those people who can't come in the mornings. Thank you. Also, this is uh, graduation day for a couple of our seniors, and we'll be honoring them. Uh, later on in the service, so you'll hear more about that. Let's go to God in prayer. Come Holy Spirit, pour out your presence upon us this day, that we may, with open ears and hearts, hear what you would say to us today. 
We come to worship you and to glorify your holy name. And we do it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, who he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he is highly exalted. Friday night, and 
I know we're not going to lose them completely because they do plan on coming back and attending church and visiting with us. And I know that they will continue to be a part of whatever church that they go to at school if they can't make it. I'm just really proud of these two girls, and I hope that y'all are too. So we have a couple of gifts for them, and um, if you will take that one, and if you will take that one, if you will go ahead and open them. Um, I know that they have Bibles galore, so we thought we would give them something um, a little different. So they each got a watch. We did go ahead and grade on the back. They have their initials. They have Ecclesiastes, which text talks about time. So um, we also have our church name and our youth group name on the back to remind them of where they've come from and to stay connected to God. And that time is the most precious thing that they can have going forward in life. Maybe get you to class on time, too. <laughs> Um, in addition to the gifts from the youth group, um, we also have gifts from the common congregation. And these gifts, each girl will receive a $500 check. And the check is from different committees, from the Animani Sunday School, the Century Bible Sunday School, the Outreach Committee, anonymous donors. Um, but we just like to present this to you and hope that it helps. And um, do y'all want to say anything? <laughs> she pawned it off to me to say something. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who donated. This was the sweetest, sweetest thing ever. We love y'all so much, and we've been so blessed to have been raised by y'all. It takes a village to notice. I said y'all. Y'all are like a second family to us, so thank you very much. Thank you all for being a part of their lives. Now, if the children would join me over at this door over here. children are coming. It's good to have Children's Church again. And uh, for parents, uh, please note that the nursery is now open again as well for those in need of some care during worship. All right. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we gather today with many reasons to rejoice. First and foremost, we rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the celebration that he came, that he died, that he rose again. And on this day, we remember that after giving instructions to his disciples, he ascended back into heaven and is exalted above every name on earth or in heaven. Lord, we give you worship this day. We acknowledge him as our Savior, as our Lord, and may he lead us and guide us as we live our lives each day. We rejoice in the celebration of our seniors' graduation. We pray for Michaela and for Libby that your hand would continue to be upon them. We pray for them as they graduate and go to college that you would lead and guide them into the future that you have for them. We pray for their parents and families giving thanks for the wonderful job they've done in raising their children. And we pray for them during this time of celebration, but also uh, a very difficult time as they prepare to send their daughters to college. Be with them during that time of adjustment. Lord, we gather today to rejoice in the CDC lifting some of the restrictions that we've lived with for over a year. Lord, we are mindful that the pandemic is not over and people are still susceptible to disease. And so we pray that we will be respectful of all. Lord, we know that especially in India, COVID is ravaging that country. 
And so we pray that they would be able to get more supplies and more personnel to help them in taking care of those who are sick and grieving those who are dying. Lord, we know that there is <clears throat> war in the Middle East. Lord, we pray for Israel and Gaza and for the conflict going on there. We pray that it would not escalate, but rather de-escalate. Lord, enable those to undergo the peace process so that people can live in harmony and lives would not be lost. We pray for our church. Give us wisdom and guidance as we seek to go forward. Enable us not to rush into new things with the newfound freedoms that we have. Lord, enable us to be mindful of others, to love others in your name, not to be selfish with our actions, but Lord, to be wise and to be kind. God, we gather to worship you this day and we listen for the word that you would speak to us through the scriptures this day. And we open our hearts and minds to do so. And all these things we pray in the name of the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praying also that prayer which he taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture today is from Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple. Praising God. This is the word of God. Before I say no one, it's very appropriate to y'all sat this morning. It's, it's really exciting because Robert and I weren't here. We kind of felt like we're up here by ourselves. And y'all's voices just rang this morning. I just had to stop singing. It was glorious. Thank y'all so much for singing out. We just truly enjoy it because. When you're up here as a worship leader, it makes such a difference to hear interaction, to hear people praising God, and that, that just filled my heart so much. Thank y'all so much for singing out.
ascension and exaltation. We do we all need to bow down and give him honor and glory. Our second scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Ephesians. You're reading from chapter 1 beginning in verse 15. Let us hear and receive the word of the Lord. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those who believe, for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is God's word for us today. I just can't help it. Whenever I hear about the power of God, my mind goes back to that movie, Bruce Almighty. Anybody remember that movie? The character Jim Carrey, played by Jim Carrey, has been very frustrated with God and probably thinks something that we've all thought from time to time. Well, if only I were God, this is what I would do. Or if I were God, things would go better in this world. And so Jim Carrey complains to God, who is played by Morgan Freeman. And so Morgan Freeman says, all right, when you leave this building, you'll be endowed with all my power. And then in the next scene, you see Jim Carrey kind of strutting down the street, saying, I've got the power. And he turns and he goes, 
and this water shoots up from a fire hydrant. Have you got the power? Do you know that you have the power? The power of God. Jesus, before he ascended in the heaven, into the heavenly places, told his disciples to wait. To wait in Jerusalem until they received power. They would be clothed with power from on high. And they were to wait, not passively, but prayerfully. If you know the story, they went back to Jerusalem and they went into this upper room, 120 of them. And they began to pray. And they were praying for 10 days until the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. We'll celebrate Pentecost next week. We're to wait for that power. I don't know how many of you read the back of the bulletin, the Breakthrough Prayer Initiative. It changes each month. But for this month, in anticipation of Pentecost, it talks about the fact that the church has been in decline in America. And this was long before COVID. And part of the prayer initiative this month says, perhaps one of the answers to the decline in the church may be that we have lost the zeal, power, and boldness of the first followers, that is, of Jesus. Many of us have not asked the Holy Spirit to fill us with His power. We too need to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit to give power to us. Ask the Holy Spirit to baptize us anew with His power and boldness to be a faithful follower and a bold witness for Jesus Christ. Lord, do it again. Baptize us anew with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of Your kingdom. Are we willing? Do we dare to pray that prayer? Lord, do it again. Jesus, right before He ascended, told His disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be My witnesses. Witnesses eventually throughout the world. Do you have that power? Do you know you have that power? It's for all believers. Power from on high. Many know the story of the early Methodist, John Wesley, leading them, and how he was a priest in the Church of England. And one evening he went very unwillingly to a place on Aldersgate Street. And he sat there, not really wanting to be there. But he heard someone reading from the church reformer Martin Luther's preface to his commentary on the book of Romans in the Bible. And all of a sudden he felt his heart strangely warmed. It made a tremendous difference in Wesley's life. But the Methodist revival that we know happened didn't really take off until seven months later, after that Aldersgate experience. When John Wesley and several of the early Methodists gathered together on New Year's Eve in order to pray in the new year. And so as they gathered at that place, they began to pray. And John Wesley says in his journal about three o'clock in the morning, as we were continuing instant in prayer, the power of God came mightily upon us, insomuch that many cried out for exceeding joy and many fell to the ground. As soon as we were recovered a little from that awe and amazement at the presence of His Majesty, we broke out with one voice. We praise Thee, O God. We acknowledge Thee to be the Lord. From that moment on, the Methodist revival really took off. People were coming to Christ in droves. People were being healed of various physical and emotional and spiritual problems and diseases. And we are inheritors of that great tradition. Have you ever had a moment experiencing the power of God like that? In Ephesians, it says in verse 19 that we may know that Paul's desire is that we may know 
immeasurable greatness of his power, God's power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Why not today? We've got the same God. The Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit in filling believers today. Do we not have that power because we've got a really small view of God and what God can do in this day and age? Has God limited His power to ages past, during the revivals of the past? What about not only Ephesians 1.19, but Ephesians 3.20? Which Paul cries out, now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. I don't know about you, but I can imagine a lot. I'm kind of like Jim Carrey sometimes. If only I were God, or if only God would do this, we'd be better off. What can God accomplish in and through us? It's the same power that was working in Jesus during his earthly ministry. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, he went about doing good and destroying the works of the devil, it says in the Bible. That power was at work throughout his ministry. The power to resist temptation. The power to heal diseases and exercise demons and forgive sins. And on occasion, he even raised the dead like Lazarus. It's the same power Ephesians says that God put to work when raising Jesus himself from the dead. Not only that, but when he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. We have that power. The power to be bold witnesses for Jesus Christ. To be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. For us to resist temptation. And to turn our eyes upon Jesus and to live for him. It's the power, Ephesians says, that we might know Jesus more and more fully. It's the power that gives us strength to overcome the difficulties in life. I know that all of us have been through tough times. This last year has been a very rough year. Have you ever felt God's strength throughout this year to get us through this pandemic? Have you ever felt God's strength when your life is in turmoil or it seems like the world is just coming down upon you or you're sinking? God's power that power to sustain us in our faith. The power for faith. Paul said, I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints and for the hope of that eternal inheritance. We have the power of faith and love. February 1984, Riley Arzano was serving a 25-year prison sentence. He and four other inmates escaped from the Fort Pillow prison in Tennessee. After they got out on their own, they split up and scattered from one another. Riley picked up a gun somewhere and he went. He entered the home, invaded the home of an elderly couple named Nathan and Louise. When he came into the home brandishing his gun, Louise told him, I'm a Christian lady, and I don't believe in violence. Now put down that gun and sit down. <laughs> Not to her amazement, but perhaps to ours, he did it. He put the gun down on the table, and he sat down. And she started talking with him. And she said, how are you doing? He said, well, I'm cold and I'm hungry. She told her husband to go get him a fresh pair of dry socks. And she said, I'll make you breakfast. And she started making breakfast there in the kitchen. After making breakfast, the three of them, Nathan and Louise and Riley sat down and they were eating breakfast. As they ate breakfast, uh, Louise asked him uh, about his family. 
And he said he only had one grandmother who seemed to care for him at all. And she had died recently. And he said, nobody cares for me anymore. Louise said, son, that's not true. She said, God loves you. And I love you. In fact, Jesus loves you so much he died for you. To forgive you of whatever you've done. And he loves you and wants you to love him. Well, their conversation got interrupted. The police were scouring the area looking for Riley and the other escapees. And as they came up to the door of Louise's and Nathan's house, Louise, of course, went outside first. She said, officers, put down your guns. I don't believe in violence. She said, he'll come out. She went in and got him. Riley came out, surrendered peacefully, was escorted back to prison where his sentence was extended because of his escape. That's not the end of the story. Louise and Nathan kept up their relationship with Riley. She began corresponding with him when he was in prison. She went to visit him in order to pray with him. Eventually, Riley became a Christian while in prison. He gained an early parole in 1995. Then in 1998, Louise died. The family asked Riley if he would be a pallbearer at her funeral and say something at the funeral. And when he got up to say something, he said, Louise is real Christianity. And he shared how he came to faith through her. But not only that, Later on, he was invited to be the guest speaker at the school where Louise and Nathan's ch uh, child was the <coughs> principal. And he talked to the students about the mistakes he had made in his life and challenged them not to make those same mistakes and to live by values of love and goodness and honesty. I think Louise had power. Had power in her faith, had power in her love had power and hope. People despair when there's nothing to look forward to. We have hope. Paul prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him through faith so that with the eyes of your hearts enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you to that glorious inheritance among the saints and to, that, to the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. We've got the power. Have we accessed that power? Are we open to God's power working in and through our lives? We heard the story about the guy who bought about a 40-acre farm. Part of the farm was still wooded, and he wanted to take down some trees, so he went to the hardware store, and he asked for uh, what was a great, powerful piece of equipment that would help him cut down some trees. And so they got out this big, heavy-duty uh, chainsaw, put it on the counter, and the clerk said, with this baby, you'll be able to cut down trees like you never dreamed of. It'll take you no time to get those trees down. So the guy bought it, went home. Two days later, came back to the hardware store with the chainsaw, slammed it down on the counter. And he said, this thing's no good. You promised me that it would cut down trees like nothing I've ever seen. And I've been trying to cut down the same tree for two days. It doesn't work. I want my money back. And the clerk said, I don't understand. He said, we try out all of our equipment before we put it up for sale. Let me try it. And so he pulled the cord and the chainsaw came to life and the guy jumped back. The customer said, what's that noise? <laughs> Have you pulled your cord? The power is there. Have we accessed it? Have we opened our lives to the Holy Spirit? 
and we do so. And he will give us strength and we'll come to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. That's what Paul said. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And we know it. Amen. A stand for him. Which is Jesus and all the world to me.
Mission trips have given me memories and friendships that I'll never forget. Oh, yeah, they're coming out with me. <laughs> <laughs> the youth are prepared to go on their next summer mission trip to Tennessee, and I uh, think. There's some in the back who will have some buckets if you want to help support them on their mission trip. Also, there's a couple of tables out there for these young ladies uh, to congratulate them. They'll be out there so you can visit with them. And uh, if you have any cards, you can leave them on their table. So we can stand again for the benediction. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.